think it was to John Pollard. Hi, Juan. How are you? Good, John. How you doing? Good. Thanks for asking. Uh, well, obviously, uh, you know, you're fighting for the title on a Saturday night. Just tell everybody just what it's like for this opportunity to get a shot to go after Bellator Gold. I mean, yeah, it's everyone's dream in MMA to fight for a world title. So obviously it's a dream come true. And I want to ask you about TJ Dillashaw. I know he's been very helpful to you in the past. Has he helped you prepare for this fight? And will he be in your corner like he has been for the past? Well, yeah, he's my teammate, and we've we've known each other for quite some years now, and we've been able to help each other throughout uh, e each other's camps. So, yeah, of course, he's been helping me out. Um, you know, there's no reason why he wouldn't be, and uh, we've just been getting better together, and, uh, yes, he'll be in my corner. And then just the final thing for me, um, you fought at featherweight uh, for a big chunk of your career there. What's it like cutting down this extra 10 pounds to make the weight limit? Well, I think I fought more at my bantamweight division than I had at uh, 145. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 an opportunity to keep growing and um, um, setting yourself different and in, uh, in the sport of MMA. I fight at 145, 155, 135. It doesn't matter. I just want the best opponent out there at the time and uh, put on a great performance for fans. Next question is to Gareth Davies. Hi, Juan. Good evening. How are you from London? What's up, brother? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm very well. You're looking very lean and mean, I must say. You've got that brilliant, brilliant hat on, as usual. Um, can I ask you, I get the sense with you, yeah, um, that at, Bello, at, at, Bel at Bantamweight, you're actually sharper, you're meaner, you're moodier. Um, and Yeah, exactly. And, and that it suits you to go down in that weight. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I love... I love Every challenge that comes up, uh, 135 is uh, quite a challenge. Um, everything's a lot more fine print. There's You have to be a lot more strict, a lot more rigorous with your training. You have to be precise on your diet. And so everything is like zoned in. You're more in tune with your body. I mean, I wish everyone could experience what I'm going through uh, uh, just because overall well-being, it brings – Spirit, spirituality is something different in you and uh and you know sometimes you're fasting and 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 you go to these training camps uh fasting and it brings your focus in and like just everything about it is is a different aura around it and i love it i love the challenge and it's it's brought back a new fire in me lovely wow inspirational words um um you're a quotes machine today um the the <laughs> Um, the other thing about you is, and you and I have had, you know, very long conversations. You've had a really long life journey to this point as well. You've only, in your senior fighting career, you've only lost to Patricio. And it was, that was over five rounds, wasn't it? You know? Um, so, you know, in a terrific fight. So, um, you know, I'm trying to talk about your, your whole journey in life here. Um, and I want you to answer in that way what it really means. I know it's a dream come true, but you have fought so hard in your life. And I know this from talking to you. You have fought so hard in your life to get to this point, you know, and hold the gold. Yeah, I mean, this journey, going through this journey in life is, is crazy, man. You've, you go through the highest highs. You go through the lowest lows. You, you're faced with adversity. But through every low become, uh, in my life, I've always had great success after, you know, whether that's spending time in jail and prison and then, uh, you know, wondering how'd you end up here and then uh, going on different journey, traveling again. And I mean, shoot, not even seeing a tree in a year and then going on these different journeys and you're able to see different countries and then, you know, having great success through that and having a family and, and going through, you know, financial struggle and then boom, all of a sudden you have financial gain, um, you know, uh, fighting for a world title you lose it and then here I am again fighting for a, a world title which I know in my heart this time is going to be different uh, the outcome is going to be different and and for me like experiencing that and and going through that type of journey like you appreciate it more you're you're able to understand what people that haven't gone through this journey or how they had the opportunity to fight for a world title have experienced hence my uh, teammate Cub Swanson like 
I can't say I, I, I don't know what it's like for him as a fighter because I've been uh, blessed with better opportunities in, in my MMA career than he has. And he's had better runs than me uh, in, in MMA. He's been able to stack up huge knockouts and be on a huge fight win streak and never get that opportunity. And for me, you know, coming off a loss, then coming off a good win, and then I'm right back in the title mix. Um, you know, that that's that's true belief in an organization uh, and, and me believing in an organization that has my back. And uh, to give me this opportunity to step in, uh, even though I haven't fought at this weight class in a you know year, but they believe in me because they've shown that I've, I've fought at different weight classes. I'm a competitor. I'm one of the best guys in the organizations that they had at any weight class I could fight and show that. And uh, so to me, it shows appreciation from the organization that makes me want to go out there Saturday night and do my damnest to win and and be a representative of Bellator MMA so I could bring that back to Spain and bring it back for the Spanish people because that's my true calling in this sport is bringing MMA, uh, a big organization like Bellator into MMA and defending the world title there is going to be priceless. The words of a champion, and uh, you sound completely on point. It's a pleasure to see you, even though you can't see us, and an absolute pleasure to speak to you. Thanks, Juan. Go get the job done, brother. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Steve? All right, Juan, thank you for the time, as always. And your previous title opportunity has already been mentioned by several people, so I want to get your thoughts how you compare Patrick Mix to Patricio Pitbull in their relative skill sets going into this title fight. Yeah, I mean, um, with Patricio Pitbull, you have an all-around awesome MMA fighter. He's one of the best in the organization. Um, he's not only a knockout artist, but he's a submission artist. He's he's great at defending takedowns. He's great at getting takedowns. He's great at you know uh, establishing range and being a counterattacker and being an a. Uh, uh, being first on the attack and being an aggressive attacker. And so you have all these highlight reels of, of Patricio that you could see in a fighter and, um, you know, it makes it for a lot dangerous uh, of a fight. Um, a guy like Patchy Mix, whose confidence level is at all time high right now, he's believes in himself more than uh, he could ever right now. He's, you know, beat guys like Ben Haas, guys like uh, the the guy in Japan. I'm sorry, I'm I'm drawing a blank. Mizugaki, I'm sorry, uh, I can't. I forgot his name, but he's beating some good guys. Uh, starting off young in his MMA career, and uh, you know, for that, for a guy like that to be fighting and seeing his specialty, uh, but not really seeing too much development on his feet and the nervousness he has on his feet, or if he could go the five rounds of a guy constantly in your face. I see some some holes there uh, that I'm hopefully able to exploit come that night. And uh, I see him uh, very good at one thing, and that's uh, jujitsu. And, um, you know, that's going to be his strength. And uh, But me, I have grew up wrestling my whole life. I'm a scrambler wrestler. I, I get in those type of mixes all the time. And uh, I'm going to exploit some of his weaknesses he has come Saturday night. Yeah, I think Yuki Matoya was the fighter you were thinking Matoya. of. Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. No, that's yeah, no Yuki. Problem. But uh, as far as you talked about aggression and how Patricio is great at establishing that range and being the first to strike, do you feel like that in itself, that loss was a teaching experience that now in this fight with Mix, you're going to be the first to draw the trigger and fire? Absolutely. I mean, coming off my first loss that I've ever had in my career, uh, you know, it made me realize that I was fighting uh, – to not lose. I was fighting to just trying to secure an undefeated record, which is insane. You know, it, it, it gave me a lackluster in my performance. Um, and going into that pit bull fight, it was the same thing. I was, I was fighting to not lose and, and just, and, and trying to just hurry up and end the fight, you know, and uh, that's where I messed up in the fight. That's where um, I, I where my lackluster of uh, performance came from was like fighting to not lose. Instead, this fight uh, that already I've already experienced that, and I've been kicking myself in the ass for that for not going out there and performing. And now, after a loss, I've grown from it. I've adapted to it. I've understand it, and I understand why I lost. And so I'm gonna do everything in my ability just to go out there and perform. I don't care about the win or loss. Uh, I'd love to have the world title. There's a bunch of, um, uh, of of great prizes that come after but if I don't perform uh, then I'm going to lose I already know that so if I go out there and I perform and do everything in my ability to perform I know that the win and loss is going to take care of itself 
All right. Well, we look forward to a great performance Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question goes to Connor Northrup. Hey, Juan, how are you doing today? Good, Connor. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for asking. Nice. Uh, one thing I just want to talk to you about, too, is I, I know uh, you were a part of the Kingdom show, and that show's obviously kind of been back on Netflix, too. I mean, what's it been like kind of seeing the resurgence of that during this time where, you know, it just stays away from the title? Oh, it's – we put a lot of hard work, and as it, we, like, just Stevenson and I, to make the um, the show as authentic as possible where people could truly relate to it, you know, uh, trying to give our life stories and being able to see our life stories play out in, in some of the um, scenes and, and kingdom as was a blessing, you know, and then to be part of it. And, you know, I fight out of uh, Navy Street to this day. Uh, that's why you'll hear them say, uh, fighting out of uh, Navy Street, Venice Beach, California um, – you know, I, a crazy story was uh, after the first season, I met the writer of the show. His name's Byron Belasco. Um, he, Joe Stevenson, introduced me to him. He's like, hey, this is my fighter. Da, da, da. He's like, oh, I know you from somewhere. And I was like, oh, I don't think we have ever met. He's like, no, but I know you. And then uh, the next day he shows me a video and it was my first fight. He's like, dude, this was the first MMA fight I've ever been to. And I watched your, your first fight. And he's like, it gave me so much inspiration on what I want a fight scene to look like because I got dropped in the, in the first 30 seconds. Uh, he was sitting in between my family. They're just going crazy because they're fight fanatics and uh, are just combat fanatics uh, in general and uh, he got the whole every different type of feeling that he wanted to feel from a crowd from a fight and uh, and he was like dude it was awesome and I was like well thanks man I appreciate it and then uh, Joe Stevenson uh, man of great ideas he said hey I have an idea like why don't you why does it, if it's okay with you let Juan fight out of uh, Navy Street the rest of his career He's like, dude, would you do that? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. I don't mind finding out Navy Street. I would love to. And then um, the next season and the season after, he let me uh, actually wrote me a character in the show. And uh, when Joe Stevenson was fighting on the Ultimate Fighter, I was um, I was I stepped in for the MMA consultant on the on the show. So it was it was an awesome experience. And then I was driving between that and the Ultimate Fighter and back and forth. And so uh, you know, just you know dealing with the in-betweens and uh it was just an awesome awesome uh opportunity to have and uh, i was truly blessed to go through the, that experience well hopefully they, they bring that show back and then, and then you can uh, have the title on the show absolutely i mean that's why like at the end they they like tell ryan like they're like we're either gonna go to bellator or ufc because i was on that fence and so they wanted to bring that reality into the show and talk more about the ufc and bellator as a guy that i fought for king of the cage and the 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 promotion was called king beast and you have these champions coming up out of king beast uh that made their claim in the in in the 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 local the local scene and now we're ready to step up to you know a worldwide um production like bellator or ufc and obviously i went the bellator route so it was cool to see that um you know transpire and and and, and happen thanks Juan. yeah absolutely all right next question harry matt hey Juan, thank you for your time oh yeah thanks harry Absolutely. So uh, you haven't been able to fight since January, uh, obviously because of circumstances out of your control. Uh, so other than training, how have you been staying busy? <sighs> training. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after training, we go back to more training. Um, no, just hanging out with the family. Um, you know, I, I was actually getting ready for a bow hunt. Um, it would have been September 3rd to the 18th, but the Apache Reservation and the Apache Tribals of San Carlos had to shut down their hunting their hunting um, uh, season because of the COVID situation. So I was getting ready, practicing a lot with TJ in our backyard, like shooting shooting some uh, 3D elk with uh, with our bows, and um, you know just spending family time, working out with Josh Rosen, build, putting on muscle, and then uh, taking it back down and uh, taking taking it, uh, trying to bring it back into 135. So got to experience some different uh, training partners, which was nice. And, uh, you know, experience training with Brian Ortega, got my jiu-jitsu game a lot more stronger, as well as Felipe Delmonica. So it's been an awesome journey. Awesome. So uh, other than your fight with Pitbull, this is actually the only time in your pro career that you've been the betting underdog going into a fight. So is that something that you're, you're aware of or you put any stock into going into a fight? 
now that's news to me. So if you're out there, you throw some good money on me, and you're gonna you're gonna come out like a bandit. So. <laughs> There you go. And uh, I guess just to, my, my last question, just to follow up on, on Connor's last question there a little bit, where you were talking about um, Kingdom and, and kind of making that decision between Bellator and the UFC. Uh, what, what was it that really made you choose Bellator or drew you towards Bellator? Um, you know what? It was just like, I believe at the time Bellator was uh, a rising promotion, you know, um, with Scott Coker and wanting to get the best talent out there. Um and you know, it's just another step in the journey. You know, you, you, uh, your MMA career, you could you could prolong it as long as the athlete wants. And so, with Bellator, I seen it as a next step for me. I wanted to be a champion within Bellator. I wanted to represent Bellator and the things they had doing uh, going. At, uh, they had a lot of hype behind them when I was coming out as a free agent. And uh, and you know, UFC's always going to be there, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, you're experiencing it with Michael Chandler right now. Like he has opportunity and Bellator has given me a lot of opportunity and they gave him a lot of opportunity. They gave him a platform. Same thing with Eddie Alvarez. They gave him a platform. And so just like they use me as a platform and uh, use me as a character for their promotion, uh, you know, you got to take the good with the good with Bellator they, uh, and use their Bell uh, use the Bellator platform and try to become a household name. Kevin? Hey, Juan. Um, you know, coming into this fight, the last time you fought in uh, the Bantamweight division was an, almost a year ago. Uh, when Bellator officially came back, uh, they came back with Bandejas versus Pettis. Bandejas, who you beat. Pettis winning the fight, you know, he's w lurking in the corner. Everyone thought, you know, he might be next for the title picture. Do you have any uh, words or, like, you know, are you looking out for Sergio Pettis? Do you, do you know he's next if you win the title? Well, I think Scott Coker said if Horiguchi is ready to go, he's going to ha obviously be have the first rights to a title fight, uh, which is respectable and honorable for uh, whoever wins the title to to take because he relinquished it. He didn't hold up the division. So if Horiguchi's ready, he 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 stakes claim to the first and for foremost title fight. But if he's not, yeah, Sergio Pettis was originally who I wanted to fight for this. Um, I thought was going to be a bigger draw for this fight, for this championship. But, you know, I'm not a promoter. I'm not a matchmaker. And uh, so, obviously, they went with Patchy Mix and myself because it could have been Patchy Mix and Sergio Pettis as well. Uh, and me left to fight uh, Bendejas again or, or someone else because uh, they've been signing a lot of the 135ers. So, uh, you know, yeah, I do see them as the next title fight uh, contention uh, if Horiguchi is not ready. Another question is, Going into this fight, you know, are you looking into uh, stopping Apache Mix's ground game and keep the fight standing, or do you welcome him to the ground? At this time right now, I'm a true rounded MMA fighter, um, and I'll, I'll go wherever this fight takes me, whether it be on the ground, whether it be standing. Um, that's the difference about me as a fighter. I'm well-rounded. I'm able to, as you can see when I fought Pitbull, I'm able to stand and bang and trade. I'm able to, as you've seen me fight Corrales, outpoint someone, or, you know, when I fought, um, who was the guy? Uh, William Joplin, take it to the ground and do ground and pound, like, I'm a well-rounded MMA fighter. I'm not scared of any of my talents that I have, and I'm 100% ready for wherever this fight goes. All right, our last question goes to Rick Sanchez. Your line is live. Hello? What's up? Um, uh, question in Spanish. Um, tú dijiste una vez, um, tú que has traído la, la peleas de artes marciales en, allá en España. ¿Cómo sientes para las personas ahí en España que tú eres la, la campeón para la gente? Ahí. Lo siento, mi, mi, mi español es muy mal. And, and, uh, oh. muy, I need to practice it more. So I need, oh, I need okay. to... I'll see, I'll see in, in English. Okay. Um, you said to bring the, the fights in, in Spain. How does it feel like for people in Spain to look at you as a role model, as the people's champion over there? Yeah, you know, I've, I've been going out there and been practicing my Spanish and, uh, you know, it takes me a while to adapt to it, just like it, just like fighting. And so um, going out there, representing Bellator and, and, and running, um, you know, clinics and uh, seminars for them to understand MMA uh, has been a journey and has been awesome. I've been welcomed out there as a brother in, 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 in Spain. And, uh, you know, it's, it's awesome. I know if I win this title, 
when I win this title and I'm going to bring it to Spain and I'm going to defend it. And uh, um, that's what we're looking forward to do and, and give them opportunity, give them praise and have the next up and comers in Spain to show that the Spanish people are fighters. The Spanish people are conquistadors still at heart and uh, they just need opportunity. They need the chance to prove that just like the Irish uh, got to prove their stake. And as soon as I bring this title home and bring it to Spain and bring a Bellator event out there, people are going to see why the Spanish are, are conquistadors, why, why they're, they're the, the real fighters. And, uh, you know, it's going to come very soon. It, this fight's more, more than me. It's, it's, a, it's for the Spanish people. All right. Thank you very much, Juan. We'll be joined shortly by Liz Carmouche.